Welcome again. Welcome to malware delivery videos. The first malware delivery method we are going to discuss is malware through websites. Take a look at this picture of this friendly website. It seems very friendly and in another completely different business, the business of real estate. Well, this website specifically is not so innocent and there are a lot of websites out there that want you to visit them. And once you visit them behind the scenes and without you noticing anything sometimes, there will be a malicious code running to find any vulnerability in your browser, in your plugins, for example, Java, Flash, to be able to exploit and launch a malware on your PC. Well, I might have gone a little bit technical, but the bottom line is this. You just simply visit a website and afterwards a hacker will be controlling your PC. Sometimes also, it doesn't have to be a malicious website created by hackers. It might be a legitimate famous website serving news or sports and it might serve alongside a malware through a malicious advertisement a hacker placed on this website. This is called malvertising, a delivery method of malware being used more and more nowadays. Websites such as Forbes, uh, the New York Times, the Huffington on post and even Yahoo have been targets of malvertising. Sometimes you will be asked to download a codec to run a video. A malware gets installed just like that. And lately have surfaced another method of getting infected. It seems that searching for celebrities on search engines might lead you to a malicious website. Yes. In 2016, according to a study by Intel, searching for Amy Schumer torrent results in a 33% chance of connecting to a malicious website. That's a 1 in, th in a 3 chance of landing on a website that serves malware. As you see here, the top 10 celebrities from this year's Intel study with the highest risk percentages include Amy Schumer, 16.11%, Justin Bieber, Will Smith, Rihanna, etc. So, when you search for these celebrities with terms such as free MP4 or torrent or uh, HD download to find, for example, Justin Bieber latest song or Will Smith latest movie for free, there would be a high probability that you will be directed to a malicious site or a malicious torrent download. Torrents, by the way, are files users can put on their PCs and you download them via a peer-to-peer -peer software. While you might find the recent TV shows and movies in torrents, it is still the most insecure online place you can get data from since a hacker can put any malicious content on a PC and advertise it as the latest TV show, the latest yet unreleased song from your favorite artist. I highly advise the inexperienced user to stay away from torrents and peer-to-peer -peer file shares on the internet. Well, scared enough? No, the solution is not to stop browsing the internet, but to implement a few measures that can provide you a better protection online. I advise you to check the video on the tools you need to browse securely, and I would like to thank you for viewing. Hello and welcome to this second video on malware delivery. And in this video, we're discussing email phishing attack so when we talk about email phishing it's a hacker sending thousands of emails to people hoping that the big percentage of these these targets will click on a link will enter a username and password when they ask them to will enter a credit card number will 
download the malware attached to this email in a zip format, executable, PDF, etc. We'll click on a malicious link that might download an exploit or a malware. All this uh, giving the targets a sense of urgency. It's urgent to do this and we're going to see several examples about this. But before discussing these phishing emails, it's good for you to know that there is another form of phishing which is called spear phishing. So when you receive a spear phishing email, it's more specific to you. It's a hacker targeting you specifically. He is collecting your interests, what you are you interested in through social networking, through any other mean. And he's crafting an email targeting you only with something that you are con concerned about. For example, if you like tennis and there is the US Open now, so it's gonna he's gonna check any news about US Open and he's gonna send it in a spear phishing email hoping that you click on the link which gonna give you, give him access to your PC. To note that in spear phishing, no grammar mistakes will be found. And most of the time, even HTTPS links are used because the hacker is giving is putting a lot of effort so to control your PC to force you to click on that link. We're gonna see a lot of uh, examples on email phishing next, so which will help you to better uh, detect them. So let's start with the first example. In this example, it's an email coming from PayPal to Jane Doe. Let's suppose that your name is Jane Doe. So even if an email is uh, holds your name, it doesn't have to be legitimate. We're going to see that in this email, there is a spelling mistake. I don't think PayPal will spell your uh, anything wrong in the email. The most uh, troubling thing in this email is that it's asking you to click on the link and enter your PayPal account information so the hacker can steal them because if you um, put the mouse over this link here, it's going to take you to this website here and you notice that this is not PayPal's website. This here is misspelled. It's P-A-Y-A-P-L. So this is for sure a fake phishing email. Let's take another example. In this example, Yahoo is upgrading. So it's also asking you urgently to verify your email credentials. The troubling thing in this email is that it's using docs.google.com slash spreadsheet so anyone can craft this in his own Google account and I don't think Yahoo will be using a Google account to do this so it's also a phishing email another phishing email it's a financial bank asking the, the, their customers to also prove their identity they have three days to do so or your account will be suspended. Also a sense of urgency. So you, you do it. Also, if you check the link, when you do the mouse over here, it's an HTTP, which is not secure. You know the difference. HTTP, you're sending your username and password in clear text. Anyone can read them on the internet. HTTPS, they are not readable they are encrypted so if it's not if you cannot send your username and password your credit card information in an http link this will signal directly that this is a phishing email let's check another example in this example it's a better crafted example where you have the template the logo of apple and it's telling you thank you for your order it's like you purchase something an iPhone and it's like telling you thank you for your order. It's also, it gives you a sense of urgency because you might think that your credit card, sorry, your credit card have been stolen and someone purchased with it. And it gives you, the only link it gives you is to cancel this order, sorry, 
to cancel this order click here and when you check the website that you should go to yes it is HTTPS but it it's not related at all to Apple it's needabortionireland.org slash log so this website could be created by a hacker or this website could be hacked by the hacker so now he can log into this website which is a legitimate could be a legitimate one and he is sending your username and password to this website because he can retrieve them from it so also this is a fake website now we're gonna move on to other forms of phishing emails those that contains those that contain attachments in them so for example this is from booking.com it's telling you that also you have a reservation which you didn't do and please refer to the attach file for full details and the attach file will be a zip file with a malware inside of it another example also this is from hm revenue and customs also an attachment a zip file which contains a malware also notice urgent notice another example would be of a sales invoice an attachment and this attachment here is a pdf so even if it's a pdf or even a jpeg file it could contain malicious code which executes on your pc so this also is a fake phishing email now since those this email for example might get caught by your antivirus solution might uh, the antivirus have a 50 percent chance of uh, getting this uh, file as uh, a malware a new trend in phishing also will have a uh, excel or a pdf in this case here file attached but the file is not malicious and the antivirus will not uh, flag it as malicious because it is not malicious the only thing inside this file you will have a pop-up to enter your username and password and in this way we are back to category one where we are stealing usernames and passwords this is another example of an excel file not a malicious but stealing your username and password in this way you will also you don't have a link in the email so also we're gonna we're gonna discuss later the the anti phishing the anti phishing solution might not catch it also because it's not a link not a link it is a file and inside of it you have the pop-up you might see also a link in Dropbox sending you to a fake Outlook page. Check here the link. It's a fake Outlook page which asks you for your username and password. Also, another form of an email sending you to a fake template of a Gmail. Check the link asking you for your username and password also another example where we're gonna see later on in defending that it could be the domain name we add uh, the hacker adds a letter to the domain name now it's a different domain name and sometimes uh, the human eye might not catch this clearly also here in this case so what can we do about this we have to first of all practice more an example how to practice you go to this link here and you're gonna see that there are a lot of uh, uh, emails so, uh, similar as this where they are asking you if it is legitimate or not and then this way you are practicing more and I advise you to check my uh, video in the protect yourself category which is protect yourself from e email phishing video which will gonna help you is going to help you to identify more and more and protect yourself from email phishing 
I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hello and welcome to this new video, malware delivery through scams. When we talk about scams, we talk about tricks that malicious people do in real life and online to get you to pay them money. To get valuable information from you so that they can sell them and benefit or even to get you to download a malware on your PC. Also to get you to, to give them your username and password. When discussing online scams, we cannot but start with the notorious Nigerian scam, which originally was delivered via email or even SMS. Several flavors of this scam have been around for, for years, but the main idea is this. Someone is in trouble. Someone wants to transfer money to you. You want a car, but you just need to send a few hundred dollars to get the big money. And then the scammers disappear. Another scam is about employment. You have been selected for a job interview abroad. Here is, here is an email I received last year about a job opportunity abroad. This email found, falls under the category of advanced fee fraud. Since after you reply to the scammer, you will receive another email congratulating you on the job acceptance, but asking you to pay some fees, work permit fees, entry clearance fees, residence permit fees, and then also the scammer disappears. The takeaway from these two scams is clear. You never, never send money to someone who asks for it by email, SMS, social networking. Do not reply, do not reply to these messages and delete them right away. Currently, with the emergence of social networking and especially Facebook, scammers and cyber criminals have seen this as a big opportunity to publish their scams to a very large audience and expect high returns. I will provide some examples of current scams on Facebook and their purpose. Scammers will try to benefit from current news. A plane goes missing. This is the Malaysian Airlines who went missing three years ago. The next day it is found only on Facebook. Just play the video and the malware might be downloaded to your PC. Click on this shocking video below and you will be asked to submit for example your username and password or also a malware will be downloaded to you. Another shocking video and the malware might be downloaded. Also, scammers know that celebrity news and sex tapes drive people to click on the link. So they will provide fake videos about celebrities caught nude or having sex to get you to click. Once you click, the video starts to play but suddenly stops and asks you to download an updated flash player or a plug-in to continue. This is actually the malware. Also, I assure you that Facebook, Hotmail, Gmail will not suddenly stop their service or will not charge for their services. So when you receive the message, Facebook will soon stop being free Click here to keep your account open, like this one or this one. Delete it and do not click on the link because the link will send your username and password to the hacker. Let us also get one thing clear. Facebook do not allow you to see who checked your profile. So all those apps that claim so are scams.
if you receive a friend request from someone you already is friend with this might be a hacker trying to impersonate your friend do not accept the friendship so do not accept a second friend request for the second time from the same friend another form of scam is the survey scam where you are asked to participate in a quick survey so you can win something like an ipad or anything the problem is that you share the survey you answer the survey you provide your phone number you provide additional info then you are redirected to another survey and another survey you might find yourself even downloading software or a plugin which could be malicious and you will not win anything the last form of scams we will discuss is the one that need you to like and share a page most of these pages will claim hundreds of prizes from known vendors like apple samsung and others like this so you see here in this example get your one thousand dollars best buy gift card starbucks one hundred dollars gift card for free british airways are giving a lot of tickets online for free all are these all these are scams that want you to like and uh, share the page congratulations you won apple are distributing 100 iphones with the release of a new iphone one like equal one want vacation to maldive They might also try to benefit from your human affection and sympathy showing fake images of sick kids claiming that Facebook will donate per click and per share of, of course this is not true what do they benefit from this a page with 100,000 likes can sell for $1,000 also once the page has a lot of likes the owner of the page can switch it to start serving malware in a minute i hope you benefited from this section on scams and i'd like to thank you for viewing hello and welcome to this video malware delivery through social engineering and software this is the last malware delivery method we're gonna discuss so what is social engineering social engineering is the art of human hacking it is how a social engineer persuade you to give him your username and password to insert a malicious USB to your PC to download a malicious software or to go to a specific malicious website social engineering can be human based or computer based social engineers will use one or all of the below methods to get you in a split of a second to make a bad decision based on one of the feelings below like accepting to insert a flash drive USB flash drive to your PC or maybe you will lend your phone to someone or let someone use your PC Someone will ask you to go to a specific website and you will go. Someone even might ask you for your username and password and you will 
provide him. Why would you do all this? All these bad decisions? Because the social engineer have used one of the these techniques below and we're gonna talk about them which talks about human nature and benefit from this these weaknesses in human nature for example a social engineer might use reciprocity which is giving you a gift and after a while asking you for a favor so you might feel that you should return the favor he might flatter you be nice to you and then ask for one of these he might threaten you if you don't do it you'll get in trouble and in a split of a second you might also provide him with one of these he might show urgency and we saw urgency in the phishing email for example someone might say to you i dropped my papers and i'm entering this meeting and i need you to and i have the a copy of these papers a soft copy on my flash drive so please insert it to your pc so i can print it believe it or not he might the social engineer might use compassion so what if he finds out on your social page online social page that you uh, are interested or help kids with uh, heart disease you are in an organization that helps kids with heart disease he might even bring a kid with him simulating that he is one of these kids and he wants your help with something and you will provide him if you want to dwell more in the world of social engineering, I highly recommend this book, Social Engineering, The Art of Human Hacking by Christopher Hadnagy, who excels in explaining the science behind social engineering and provides very interesting real cases and stories. Computer-based social engineering let's check or let me ask you this question what would you do if you find a usb flash drive in a parking lot this is a technique called usb dropout what would you do if you find a usb flash drive uh, in, in the university uh, in your school anywhere in your work now we have here two cases this one usb or one flash drive might be a used flash drive and labeled and the social engineer might label it it might label it for example hr or uh, pictures my pictures whatever anything that might lure you into getting this flash drive and inserting it to your pc and then you will get a malware Another scenario might be that you will see a flash drive brand new. It will look brand new, but you have to pay attention that the social engineer might take the USB flash drive, uh, add to it the malware, and then repackage. Will repack repackage it as to be brand new as to look brand new and then also you might say I, I can use it and when you insert it to your PC you get also the malware let me ask you another question what if I told you a flash drive can burn your PC would you go around and insert flash drives into your PC there is a software that you can put on a flash drive and th that has been tested and it will send a high voltage to your laptop and it will destroy your laptop so it's not just about malware it's about your it's about the the loss of the laptop
The last thing I'm gonna talk about is one of the earliest methods of spreading malware, which is through software. Let's pay attention to this. Free software, when you think free software, remember this phrase, when the product is free, the real product is you. So often free software will come bundled with adware or even spyware that will be used to gather information about you for to, to display ads to you and pop-ups, annoying pop-ups. Keep in mind also that cracked software is often malicious. What is a cracked software? A cracked software means that a software was, so you have this software here, it was altered in a way to bypass the license. So the, the software, you have to pay for it. Someone altered this software to bypass the license and now you don't have to pay for it. You get it for free. But keep in mind that if this hacker or this programmer can alter the software to bypass the license, he can also alter it to add a malware such as a Trojan horse. So he can control now your PC. So often cracked software are malicious. The third thing we need to pay attention to is that downloading software from unknown sources is harmful. What does this mean? It means that if you want to download Adobe Reader, for example, you have to go to the Adobe Reader site, type, in, type it manually in the browser, and download it from there. You don't download it from another website, which might have also altered it. So how to protect yourself? Having all this knowledge that we talked about, how to protect yourself? I'm gonna give you some rules. First of all, do not advertise your social life to everyone. Why is that? Because the social engineer will try to gather information about you, what you like, what you fear, anything about you, to try to do his social engineering tricks on you. So the less you advertise about yourself, the safer you are. So you have to be careful what you are posting on the internet. The second rule is do not provide sensitive information username and password, phone number, credit card, etc. to anyone over the phone, by email, directly, in person. Your, keep in mind that your username and password are yours and you should not share with anyone. The third rule you have to follow is that you do not plug a stranger's flash drive to your PC. It could be malicious. It could even destroy your PC. Keep in mind. Also, the fourth rule is avoid free software. As I told you, it could be bundled usually with an adware. So better avoid free software. For sure, avoid cracked software. It's often related with malware, binded to a malware. If you need a software, buy it. And also keep in mind that you should not download software from unknown sources. You go to the original source and download it. The last thing I'm going to talk about is what if you have a flash drive or a, uh, several flash drives and you have important data on them, pictures and stuff, 
And what if this flash drive, you lost it? What would happen when someone finds it? So in order not to have this person reading all your files and pictures, you have to think about if you have flash drives that are that have important data on them, you have to encrypt your flash drive, make them unreadable and protect them with a, a complex password. One of the tools that can do this is encryptstick.com. You can check it out on the website. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hello and welcome to this new video, how to secure your browsing step by step. In a previous video, we saw that by just visiting a website, you can get a malware installed on your PC. By following these steps here, we're going to see how we can secure our browsing experience. First of all, you should use a web filter. A web filter will categorize all the websites in the world and will blacklist malicious ones. It will display a blocking message when you try to log into one. If you have any internet security suit from the major antivirus companies such as Kaspersky, Symantec, Bitdefender, it will include a web filter and will not allow you to visit, to visit malicious or even suspicious websites. Moreover, you can use a free DNS filtering solution from Norton or OpenDNS.com that will also blacklist malicious websites. You can also, if you think a link or a website is suspicious, always revert to manual checking through one of these sites here. Zscaler has a good website, Trend Micro, uh, Sucuri.net, URL Void, and even VirusTotal. To note that VirusTotal does not only check for malicious websites. If you receive a file via USB, email, or even downloaded it, and you are not sure if it may contain something malicious, you can upload to VirusTotal and VirusTotal will analyze it using 68 different antivirus engines and it will give you the results. If you find that some of the AVs have found it as malicious, delete it and don't open it. Secondly, I recommend you use Google Chrome as your browser. Google Chrome, in my opinion, is the most secure browser. Now, using a secure browser is not enough by itself. Like I mentioned before, the malicious website will try to find a vulnerability, which is a bug in your software, so it can get into your PC. A vulnerability could be in your browser, but it also can be in your operating system in any third-party application like uh, Adobe Reader, uh, Flash, Java, even Microsoft Word. So what's ne what needs to be done here is very clear. You should patch and patch and patch. You need to make sure that you are always updating your operating system. If you are running a Windows operating system, you can go to Control Panel, System and Security, Windows Updates, and in the Windows Updates settings, you click Install Updates Automatically, so that your operating system is always patched and updated for the vulnerabilities that it may include. For the third-party software, uh, two software that can help in this 
are Secunia PSI and a more friendly software which is Heimdall Pro. You can find it in heimdallsecurity.com. Going back to the browser security, you should check what plugins are installed on your browser. Plugins such as Java, Flash, etc. could be installed and not used and could be safely disabled. Chrome by default nowadays is only allowing Flash. No more plugins work on Chrome. It's only allowing Flash and it's allowing it with ask before run option enabled. So it will ask you if you want to enable Flash on this website or not. If you want to check what plugins are enabled on any of your browsers, you could go to these websites and they will display what is enabled so you can disable them. Also, in the browser settings, I advise you to install these three security extensions below. In Chrome, if you want to go to this to check the security extensions, you go to Chrome in the browser and type in Chrome extensions. Once you're there, you can at the bottom of the page find add extensions. Click on it so you'll be in this page where you can search for extensions and download them. I advise you to install Ghostery to preserve your privacy while visiting websites. HTTPS Everywhere, with, which makes sure that you connect securely via HTTPS and HTTPS only, and no HTTP. And uBlock Origin, which is used to block ads and pop-ups. Another good advice is to use a VPN connection when connecting to the internet. Your PC wants to connect to the internet. It's gonna transmit and receive data. Whatever you're transmitting and receiving, if you, if you are on an unsecure connection, someone on the internet might be able to intercept what you are sending and receiving. To make sure that this, is, this data is unreadable to anyone, you buy a VPN account from one of the providers of the VPNs on the internet. So you install a software on your PC and you connect, setting up a secure tunnel. So whatever you're sending and receiving here will be unreadable to anyone. It will be encrypted. One of the good VPN providers are StrongVPN, HMA, F-Secure, Freedom. And you can reach it through this website, Private VPN, iVPN, Private Internet Access. Another recommendation is to use anti-exploit software. I would recommend Malwarebytes anti-exploit software. This software will defend your PC even if you have vulnerable applications on it. So it will stop the exploitation of any vulnerable app. Of course, nothing is 100% secure, but this will add an extra excuse me, an extra layer of protection. And lastly, my last advice to you is do not use a user with admin privileges. Create a standard user that cannot install anything on the PC and use it to browse. In this way, if a malicious program wants to run on your PC, if a malware is downloaded on your PC and wants to install, it will not be able to install because it does not have the admin privileges. If you need to install a software, you will be prompted to, in to enter your admin password and you can install it. 
and after this you run the normal standard user to do this you can create the account in windows by going to accounts and creating a standard user i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing hello and welcome to this new video protect yourself from email phishing we've seen in the previous video about phishing how to detect phishing a lot of examples that we saw and i advised you at the end of the video to practice a lot well we're gonna start this video by also providing you more links to practice so as you saw earlier we we checked this one which is open dns phishing quiz if you have finished this successfully i advise you to check the second and third link and to see what uh, your score is and to keep on practicing more and more now if you practiced and st and still are not sure whether this is a phishing or not when you receive an email i'm gonna give you three rules to go with them and by following them you are 99% sure that you're not going to be tricked into a phishing uh, email. The first rule is to never ever click on a link from an in from inside an email. So never click on a link from inside an email. I'm going to remind you of one of the examples I gave in the previous video. It could be something urgent. If if you don't click and you verify your account in 3 days your account will be suspended they are they want you to click on the link and provide anything and provide your username and password or the link could be malicious you never click on a link from inside an email if you're you want to check the link if they are talking about amazon you go into the browser and you type in https amazon.com etc so never click on a link from an inside an email this is rule one Rule two, never open an attachment unless you are sure who sent it and for what reason. Now, here I want you to, uh, to, to pay attention. From the from in an email, this, you might receive this from your friend. So it could be a friend. This does not mean that it is legitimate. Uh, you have two cases. One, someone is spoofing spoofing is imitating the the the, the your uh, email address your friend's email address but it's not your friend who sent it two your friend could have already been hacked and the malware has controlled his pc or a worm or something and now his pc is generating malicious emails so by just saying that your friend, I know this guy, I can open the attachment. No, I need to verify that he sent me the attachment if I want to open it and for what reason. So I need to call him if I suspect that this is a weird email from my friend. The third rule is never even provide your username and password or credit card number in an email through a link attachment or in the email body meaning that any email that asks for your username and password whatever the case you don't you don't provide it you don't provide your credit card number for sure either if it's a link or uh, as we have seen before it could be an an excel file which is not malicious and through this excel file they're gonna ask you for your username and password you're not gonna supply them so if you all or uh, if you stick to this rule you're all also protecting yourself better so again rule one never ever click on a link rule two never open an attachment unless you are sure who sent it and for what reason and rule three never ever provide your any username and password any identification through an email through a link attachment or in the email body now what can you do if you're not sure if this link is a phishing uh, link or not you can verify it on these very useful sites 
You can go to isitfishing.org or fishtank.com and you provide the HTTP link that you have copied from inside the email without clicking on it and it's gonna uh, uh, tell you if it's a uh, phishing or not. Another thing you can do is to have a spam phishing filter in addition to your antivirus. So what I'm saying here is that you need uh, an internet security suit, antivirus internet suit. So any antivirus from the top antiviruses that you know will provide you with not only the antivirus module but also a phishing module. You can check in the, in the through this link the latest anti-phishing test and you can see wh wh who is better to buy from. Lastly, I'm going to say also that this might help removing in the folder options of your if you're using windows the hide extensions for known file types will make it easier easier for you to see in the attachment the real uh, extension of the file so instead of just finding in the attachment a jpeg which is hidden in an executable you're seeing the real executable directly but again i don't i don't advise you to click on the attachment even if it's a jpeg okay you need to know that this the the, the sender has sent it and for what reason before uh, uh, getting the atta receiving or accepting the attachment so i guess and i hope that this chapter added to your protection and to your knowledge how to protect yourself from phishing emails and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hello and welcome back. In a previous video we saw a lot of scams and we identified the new trendy scams. In this video we will see how to protect ourselves from these scams. Let's recap first of all on the purpose of scams. Purpose one, they want to deliver malware to you through an executable or a malicious flash plugin. We saw a lot of videos in, a social, net, in social networking sites, shocking videos, new videos, just to make you click on them so that a malware can be installed on your PC. Purpose two, they simply want your username and password. Like phishing, scams are being used in social networking sites to get you to click on the link and submit your username and password and the hacker has them. Purpose three, let's not forget that a page with 100,000 likes can sell for $1,000 or more. So a hacker will put a page and will say like and uh, and share this post so you ca you might get an iphone an airline ticket or anything interesting once it has this page has a lot of likes it can be transferred to a malware serving page so how to detect scams first Let's identify that there are a lot of fake news sources out there. Some of examples, nationalreport.net, hustlers.com, empirenews.net, they are all fake news sources. They do say that on their website with a small disclaimer saying that this is a website, is a political satire, mostly fictitious. If you're not sure if this is uh, a real or fake news you go to this website real or satire.com post the link and they will tell you if it's real or not most importantly to detect scams and if you're not sure if this is a scam or not for example they found the missing airplane is it a scam or not you go to one of these sites scam advisor hoax slayer or scam busters and you 
check inside their site to find the real information about this topic. All these links are shown in a Word document so that you can click on them and go directly to all the sites in the videos. Lastly, remember, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hello and welcome to this new video, protect yourself from ransomware. First of all, let's be clear guys. Ransomware is a type of malware, but due to the huge increase in the number and types of ransomware witnessed every year, I'm dedicating this chapter to talk about ransomware and to talk about additional ways to protect yourself from ransomware. Ransomware started out by locking you out of your PC. So you might wake up one day, turn on your PC and you see this picture. Your computer has been locked and you have to pay money during 24 hours so that you can get back your files and data from this PC. Ransomware has evolved through the years and now we call it crypto ransomware. So now it doesn't just lock your PC, it encrypts all the files. And by encrypting the files, these files are not readable anymore. Unless the hacker gives you a key to decrypt back these files. And to give you the key, the hacker will ask for a ransom. You have to pay to get your files decrypted back. Ransomware is on the rise. Since 2015, we've had we've seen a huge increase in the number of ransomwares. And the average ransom amount paid per ransom is $679. So it is a, a money making industry for the cyber criminal. Ransomware has evolved and we have seen several types of ransomware and I'm gonna mention a few here. Chimera not only encrypts your files but will publish, will threaten to publish your pictures on the internet if you don't pay. Jigsaw will push you to pay because if you don't pay it will delete a file every 60 minutes, for example. DMA Locker not only encrypts your, net, your files, but it also encrypts your network shares. This is, means that if you have a PC and it's connected to a server where you are copying your files to this server and backing your data, if you got hit with a ransomware here, it not, doesn't only just encrypt your files on the PC, it goes through the, sh it detects the share and goes through the share and also encrypts your backup files. In this way, you don't have a backup anymore and you need to pay to decrypt your files. Server also speaks to you and push you to pay the ransom. There is a ransomware for Android now. We've seen a lot of ransomware for Android. There is also ransomware as a service. So cyber criminals are offering for a cheap amount of dollars a ransomware as a service for someone to use it on others. So how to protect yourself? You shouldn't be scared of ransomware because ransomware at the end is just a malware and the malware will get delivered to you from the already discussed methods of delivery that I talked about in previous videos. You see here from the latest statistics that 31% of ransomware are being sent through email links. We are using also email attachments, websites, social media such as Facebook. You can get a malware by 
انت uh, inserting a USB stick to your laptop etc so all these methods we already know how to protect ourselves from right you need to check the phishing protection scam detection you need to have an, an updated antivirus already we discussed this now I'm gonna discuss a few more points that can have uh, provide you with additional uh, protection from ransomware first of all we have seen a lot of ransomware spreading through macros in office documents in word excel macros are used a lot in excel so what you need to do is go to any tool in microsoft office like powerpoint excel or whatever and you go into the trust center macro settings and you disable all macros you never enable a macro because it might be malicious the second thing we're gonna do is we need to back up our data since if you have a copy of our data even if we got hit with a ransomware we have a copy of the what is inside the, the this pc and we can just format the pc and move on to back up data we can back up to an online storage or an offline storage or we can choose to sync data from uh, for uh, every day for example our online options are uh, we have a lot of online options there are a lot of vendors that are providing this i urge you to check them check spider oak check Trezoret because they are more secure than the others they provide secure storage for offline backup if you want to do a backup on a local hard drive i advise you to have two local hard drives do the backup on two local hard drives store each hard drive in a different location do a backup every week at least or use a tool such as sync toy for windows to do offline syncing the, the data will be just stored the difference in data will be just stored on your local hard drive lastly if you got hit by a ransomware don't panic because more and more antivirus companies are finding the decryption options for ransomware so you could check for example this site it's posting day after day new findings of new ransomware that has been decrypted so it might be your lucky day after a bad day hit by a ransomware that you find the decryption method to decrypt this ransomware and get your data back without paying i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing hello and welcome in this video you're gonna learn how to create super passwords but first let's start by showing off the worst passwords of 2015-2016 according to splash data the number one password in 2015 used was from one to six password the numbers from one to eight qwerty the pattern on your keyboard from one to five etc let's see if things got better in 2016 well in 2016 the number one password used was from one to six it's still the same the second is password and the third is worst it's from one to five we see also very weak and very guessable passwords such as football qwerty princess welcome solo for han solo from star wars abc123 
admin flower password with a zero instead of O if you see one of your passwords here you need to change it immediately after finishing this video but this is not only the passwords that you should avoid putting in any of your online accounts you should avoid also the keyboard patterns which are easy to to use passwords such as qwerty which is a sequence of six letters uh, on your uh, keyboard uh, such uh, as ASDFGF, HFGH, QWERTY1234, all these are keyboard patterns easily guessable by the hacker and you use it because they are easy for you to remember. What you should avoid also are all these. So uh, your password should not have inside of it your name your family name, your pet's name, any significant date, the date you got married, for example, the date of birth of you or your children or your wife or any close relation, your child's name, your place of birth or your child's place of birth, telephone numbers, your phone number, your wife's phone number, all these should not be in a password you should avoid them because the hacker or a social engineer will know about all these through your social networking sites or through one of your friends social networking site all this information should you should not put in a password also in passwords to avoid, you should avoid short passwords taking from words in the dictionary because a hacker can have a list of dictionary words and try them automatically through a software against your online login accounts. Simple passwords based on favorite rock star or actor based on a favorite song or movie. If your friends know this, then a hacker can know them also. You should avoid using them inside a password. And also, all kinds of the word password. Here we have uh, this word, which we have the P capital. We replace the A with at and we replace the O with zero. This is a complex password, but a password which is very known to hackers so you should avoid it here are some examples of better passwords but also we should avoid them so those passwords are better than the ones we described earlier like putting your name with your birth date putting a name or your child's name with a phone number a word with a date also those are better but also there are now softwares that are used by hackers that can create a list of uh, your uh, names and your uh, numbers significant numbers and create a list of them sequentially and also try them against your passwords even words with symbols for example taking the word braveheart and changing the a for at the e for three and here in nothing new the o for zero you might think this is a very co a very complex password but also there are softwares now and tools that can automatically do this change here and run them and try to guess your password so after seeing all these passwords to avoid let's check some rules to follow in order to have a good password first of all and the most important rule do not use the same password on all your accounts 
What we are meaning here is that we should use one totally different password per account. So if you have a Facebook account, uh, Instagram, Gmail, etc. This rule says that for every login you have, you should have a totally different password totally different not related and there is there should be no pattern between them each one has a totally different password why because if one of the accounts got hacked either they stole your password or they hacked facebook and got all the passwords they will run it on all your accounts and now they can log in to every single account you have also do not keep your passwords on a text file excel file and this is also because if you have your laptop and you have a notepad or an excel file where you put your all your passwords if someone hacks into your laptop and gets this file now he can log into all your account at once another rule to follow is to use two-factor authentication whenever possible Facebook Gmail Google etc all supports two-factor authentication what is two-factor authentication when you want to log into Gmail for example you have to put your username your password and it's this is not enough anymore the the login is going to ask you for a specific code generated each time differently and this code you can choose to get it either via SMS or via an app that you download that generates different codes every time and now you have you need two things to log in so if someone compromises your password they still don't have the codes and this makes your account online more secure another rule to follow is to create long passwords we're gonna see that we're gonna create uh, passwords with more than 12 characters using letters numbers and symbols and to note that these symbols here as an example are much better than using these well-known so those are now well-known symbols let's take an example of good passwords well my advice to you is simple you take a phrase from a song let's see here and the woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle taken from a u2 song you can take each letter of every word and join it here to make it a password you can add to it a number and the symbol at the end so in this way you by by saying this sentence you get the first letter of each word this might be complex to you so let's try to make it more easy you just take a phrase and the woman needs a man you add to it a symbol and a number a fish needs a bicycle you add to it a symbol and a number as easy as this you can also combine different words battles london laptop dinosaur adding a word and a number sorry a number and a symbol combining multiple languages eat the gâteau au chocolat combining english and french for those who know a second language this could be very uh, it's it could be good for you So it's, it's just about getting a phrase that is easy to memorize 
and hard to break for example if we want to check how secure is this password how 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 many days it needs someone to break this password we can go and check it with a good password meter password.kaspersky.com or how secure is my password.net are two good examples of good password meters if we go to password.kaspersky.com let's go to passwords to this site and i've put here and the woman needs a man for and a symbol if we check here if you have the world's fastest supercomputer it's gonna take it 63 centuries to break this one so it's not an easy uh, this is making it more difficult on a hacker to break your passwords going back to our slide I have two more things to give you before we finish up this video if it's too hard for you to memorize passwords because you're gonna need to create a password per account as we said I advise you to get and download a password manager on your PC phone tablet what a password manager such as LastPass, OnePassword, KeePass, or Dashlane, which is a screenshot is taken from Dashlane here, what it does is that it, it groups all your accounts inside of it. So you can create all your logins inside of it. You create a login for Gmail, Facebook, Amazon. You create all your logins with your passwords. It's gonna save them and secure them in a in a safe place what you need to access your password manager is what we call the master password the master password you will create it with the same rules that we uh, we we, show, we saw earlier and the master password once you connect to it you you put it you're gonna open this application and you're gonna see all your passwords a good advice would be to use two-factor authentication on your master password so you will need a code also to better secure your master password and you will need to memorize only one password i advise you to go to dashlane.com download the software for free and check how to log in easily through it the last thing i'm gonna say is that do not log into facebook for example from a device you do not own any device you do not own your a pc a mobile for your friend you do not put your user and password inside of it because you might they might have a keylogger that is logging everything that you type you do not share your password with anyone no one should have your password not even your wife your mother your father because your password is your identity on the internet so it's your job to keep it safe if someone gets your password, he's going to be able to log in to Facebook on your behalf, posting, uh, posting stuff that you don't want to post, adding friends, and cheating on your friends. Also, if someone logs in to Gmail, he's going to be able to read your emails and send emails on your behalf. So your password is your identity on the internet. Keep it safe. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Welcome to this new video. 
How to secure your wireless home network? First of all, let's start with wireless attacks. Why is wireless less secure than a cabled network? Let's take an example of your home. You have an access point or a wireless router transmitting wireless signal everywhere in your house and outside your house also. You have your PCs connected, mobile devices, and you are using the internet. So what can someone outside your house, your neighbor, someone in the parking lot do? Well, he can do several things. First of all, he can try to connect directly to the access point, log in to the interface and change your settings. Another thing he can do, he can try to guess your wireless password. Once he gets your wireless password, he can now either connect and use your internet connection or he can sniff your connection. Sniffing, if, if the attacker is sniffing your connection, he is checking or getting a copy of what you are doing. And this is very serious. So if you're connecting to the internet like this, he's getting a copy of what you are doing. If you are transmitting a file from your device to another device, he's getting a copy of what you're doing. So wireless attacks are serious and they are mostly used either to spy on you or to simply utilize your internet connection. So let's see what to do to prepare and protect ourselves and protect our wireless network. Those are the things that I'm going to discuss in this video. And we're going to discuss each one and change the settings of each one. First of all, let's protect our access point. As I told you, in the access point, you log to connect to the access point and configure the access point, you log into a URL, for example, HTTP 192.168.1.1. And then you, you are asked for a user and password. If you leave them default with the access point, they're going to be most probably admin, admin or something like this. So you would, you, do, you would not want to leave these default and you don't want for someone outside your house to, con to change the settings on your access point. So the first thing we need to do is to change the default password with a long password complex and to disable remote management. You don't want someone to remotely over the wireless link co try to connect to your access point so disable remote management once you, you you did this now you go to the wireless settings and the, th the the thing that you want to do is to change the network name or the ssid also you don't want it to be default Cisco or Linksys, depending on the brand of the access point that you have. So you change the network name. The network name is what is displayed once you try any device tries to connect to the access point. It's the network name that you join and then put the password. So you change the SSID and optionally you can even disable the broadcast of the SSID. So the access point will not go on and say I am network X. He's not going to say anything. You need to, on the PC, type in, I want to join network X and then put the password. 
I say optionally disable this because this is this will not make your network uh, fully secure since this can be bypassed by a hacker. The most important thing to do, however, is to put WPA2 personal use this encryption method in your wireless settings and supply it with a long long password this password is your wireless password whenever you join a network this is the password that you're gonna enter I recommend to change the password every month if possible or every two months because changing the password even if someone gets into your network by changing the password is not is going to try again now to break into your network wpa2 personal with a very long password is considered very secure till now but to maintain its security you have to disable wps even if you have a very good WPA2 password but you have enabled WPS with a pin code this can be hacked or cracked or broken in an hour so you don't want someone to break into your network you disable WPS make sure it's disabled Another optional feature which can add a bit to your security is to filter per MAC address. What does this mean? You have the access point, you have your devices. Each device has a unique MAC address, MAC1, MAC2, MAC3. You can know what is the MAC address, for example, on your PC by doing IP config. So, if you insert into the MAC address table, filtering table in the access point, the list of your MAC addresses, now the access point will only connect or accept connections from these devices. Any other device trying to connect will fail. I leave it optional because this also can be bypassed by a skillful hacker. The last thing I advise you to do with all after you do all these settings is to keep on monitoring your connections. The access point and your devices if you have a PC with this firewall on it which is a wireless firewall called glass wire. If you install this software here it will show you all the devices that are using your network if you see any new device that shouldn't be in your network then you will be alarmed to check what the this device is doing what it is transferring data and to change immediately your password so monitoring your connections will help you identify if someone is uh, in your network thank you for viewing hello and welcome again to our last video in this series the internet security guide online security videos this video is going to talk about shop si safely online so what are the dangers of shopping online I guess the nightmare of a shopper is to pay for goods and do not receive them and this is a big problem that we're gonna tackle in this video so someone might have created a website which is a fake website selling goods that he doesn't have and you pay and you don't receive the goods Another problem in shopping online is unsecure websites selling goods. So in this case, you might have a real website with a good intention to sell you goods, 
but it's unsecure meaning that when you are entering information in this website when you're entering your credit card number someone is getting a copy of it because maybe the link is HTTP or it's not a very good secure HTTPS link and we're gonna talk about this later on the third problem in dangers of shopping online is unsecure connections so in this case the website that is selling the goods is real and it is secured in a good way you are here and you are sending your inf credit card information but the connection is not secure this will let a hacker get a copy of your credit card we're gonna tackle these dangers and see how can we secure our online shopping experience so the first rule we need to uh, use is to buy from reputable stores Amazon Apple Google I've shared with you here a link on the top 10 online shopping sites in the world the most reputable ones if you check here we see that we have Zappos Nasty Gal uh, Alibaba Mr. Porter Etsy and in the top four Walmart Asus eBay and of course Amazon is the number one so buying from reputable stores but buying from reputable stores let me get my pen back is great but if you go directly in the in your web browser and put HTTPS and the website such as Amazon you never click on a link inside an email claiming to be from Amazon you never click on a link someone sent you a link through a chat service you don't click on that link because it might it might not be the real Amazon you're being redirected to so to go to a shopping website you type the website yourself in the URL the reputable website the second thing we're gonna talk about is that sometimes you might want to shop from a not reputable website so what do you do in this case here you have several things you have to follow first HTTPS is a must but it's not enough you need you need also to check the padlock certificate validation I'm gonna show you how and you need to check the type of certificate that is DV OV and EV and also you need to check the SSL protocols used and let me elaborate on all this so you have a website let's say you are the creator of a website that sells goods when you create the website it's on the internet it's on the world wide web it's by default HTTP if you want to sell goods you'll have to buy you have to make it HTTP an HTTPS connection which is secure and so you have to buy a certificate to buy a certificate you have to contact an entity such as VeriSign that sells certificates now VeriSign to sell you a certificate it can sell you a DV certificate or it can sell you an OV or EV certificate if it's DV it means domain validation 
meaning that if it's wanna sell you the the, the certificate, its only uh, criteria is to validate your domain, Amazon.com or something. If it's va if the domain is valid, it's gonna give you a certificate. For OV certificates, it's organization validation. Before giving VeriSign giving you this certificate, it's gonna validate that you are a company. What's your address, real address, location, and phone number? Who are the owners, etc. When a, when VeriSign or any other certificate uh, authority gives you gives a company an OV organization validation certificate it means that they trust that this company that that uh, that uh, is selling goods is a legitimate company and it will send you the goods so now you have a website secure with an ov certificate which we w w this is what we want to validate as a user in order to get or shop online from not reputable stores to believe them let me give you an example so to do all this you can go to one of these links below and i've already done this exercise before so if i check i'm sorry let's check here amazon.com by the way, before checking Amazon, we can check the padlock. So by simply going to Amazon.com and checking the padlock and clicking on view certificates, we're checking that the certificate is issued to Amazon.com and it's valid. Check the date. It is valid. But this is not enough. I need to know if Amazon has a DV or OV certificate for the reason I just shared with you. So in this site, I can check and this is and this is a one time check, by the way. So you only check once this, you know that this store is reputable or not, is, is uh, trustworthy or not. So this is an OV certificate. It has all the information here. The validity and even it has what protocols are being used and of course using TLS 1.0 1.1 and 1.2 is the choice nowadays if a store is still using SSL v2 or v3 also it can be hacked so I advise you to avoid such stores Good, so I hope this is clear now. We're gonna continue with our advice. And to fix now the, pro the third problem, if you remember, the third problem of, uh, of shopping online was unsecure connections. This hacker here that can get your copy of the credit card information or your username and password. So to fix this, the advice is very simple. Do not use a public wireless hotspot when you are shopping online. Any insecure wireless connection, try to avoid it. So if your wireless internet at, uh, at home is secure and you followed the, the steps I gave you in the video wireless internet uh, at home, you can trust it now else if you want to shop online what you can do is to use tethering so what, what is tethering so you have your pc by the way you can shop from shop online from your mobile through the 3g or 4g connection directly which is secure now if you need to use a pc what you can do is turn the hotspot feature on your mobile which uh, is in every mobile and once you turn the hotspot you'll need to provide you're gonna have an SSID and a password a complex password you need to provide them 
on your wireless connection so you provide your the SSID and the password and now you have a secure connection between your laptop and your mobile and going through 3G and here you can do your shopping online securely so this is a better way in order to have uh, an online shop a better online shopping experience else if you don't have any other alternative but a public wireless network you need to have a VPN software on your PC or on your uh, phone we're gonna tackle uh, VPN or we already tackled VPN in uh, uh, an earlier video the last thing I'm gonna say about secure online shopping is to use two-factor authentication to log into these online shopping sites so Amazon Apple uh, Google etc all these websites nowadays supports two-factor authentication which means that it's not just enough your password to log into these sites you need another a second method of authentication this second method of authentication it could be an SMS they send you an SMS each time a new code you need to enter it or there is an app that generate codes so you have this possibility in this way if someone steals your password he's not gonna be able to log in to these uh, online sites and get your info from them and shop on your behalf or steal your credit card two-factor authentication is becoming more and more of a necessity I hope this have this video was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing we're gonna start our first chapter by talking about the internet the internet is now one of the basic human needs there are nearly 4 billion people yes you heard me right 4 billion people using the internet in 2017 so what is the internet anyway the internet is the network of all networks it is all the PCs in the world connected together online in one minute of internet there is 2.78 million YouTube video views there is 2.4 million Google searches 150 million email sent yes in one minute and 200,000 of Amazon sales so how do you connect to this virtual world you can connect through an ISP or a telco operator through DSL cable modem 3G LTE fiber optics it doesn't matter how you connect once you're connected and has an IP address you are part of this huge network and you can reach and be reached by anyone and this is why it is dangerous chapter 2 will focus on the dark side of the internet I'd like to thank you for viewing hello and welcome back we're on to our next chapter in this online security series which talks about the dark side of the internet if you know your enemies and know yourself you will not be imperiled in a hundred battles taken from Sun Tzu the art of war funny how this old saying from Sun Tzu a Chinese general more than thousands of years ago still applies to our digital online world we need to know what we are facing in order to conquer it so in this chapter we will answer the question what is a hacker and what does he want from my PC 
Well, a hacker is equivalent to a cyber criminal who wants to get into your PC mainly to do the following evil deeds. Information theft. Information theft is stealing important data from your, from your PC to sell it and make money. Identity theft. It's stealing your username and password, your bank account information, your credit card number. Data manipulation. Changing data on my PC so that the displayed results are changed in reality. Take for instance, uh, altering res exam results, medical results, and uh, what would happen if we do this. And lastly, device control. Yes, a hacker wants to control your PC, either to use it in online malicious activities or to lock it maybe and ask for money to give it back to you. Good. Now that we know what a hacker wants, let us answer the question that comes naturally after that. How does he do all that? To answer this, I would like to welcome you to the world of malware. Malware, a new word made up of two, new, two known words, malicious and software. So the hacker will try to deliver a malware to your PC so that he can control it, use it or manipulate it to serve his malicious purpose. In the next chapter or video, I will be introducing you to the whole family of malware in details. Examples of malware you probably heard about are virus, worm, trojan horse, ransomware. To note that in 2015, for example, in the United Kingdom, cybercrime surpassed the real crime rate in the country. Yes, 53% of all crimes are cybercrime. So you better continue with the videos to learn how to defend yourself in this dangerous online world we live in. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hello and welcome to our next chapter, the world of malware. In this chapter, we will try to differentiate between different types of malware in order to better understand how to defend against them in later videos okay so what is a virus a virus by the way is one of the oldest malware it is an executable file it usually needs your interaction double click so if you don't double click it can't enter your PC usually the virus will harm your PC it will delete files, damage your, your hard disk. Whereas a worm, a worm will try to infect as many PCs as possible by spreading through the network. Do you remember the blaster worm? The blaster worm would spread through the network making use of a bug in Windows XP, if you remember. Or it would be spread via email and from, from PC to PC. Another malware we're gonna try to know how it works is a Trojan horse. And it got its name from the story of Troy, the legend of Troy. Remember when the Greeks entered Troy by tricking the people to accept a large wooden horse as a gift and inside the horse there were soldiers. So while you think you are downloading the innocent Adobe Reader, for example, software, Adobe Reader, and you install it, the Trojan horse is installed also 
and now the hacker can control your PC over the internet. Have you heard about spyware? Adware. A spyware or adware is a software that sends information about you over the internet, mostly for advertising. Well, they usually do not cause harm to your PC directly, but if suddenly you feel your PC is too slow, so these are some signs, too slow. I'm gonna write this also, internet activity, too much internet activity, sending bytes. Perhaps your browser is opening several tabs or pop-ups, pop-ups. These are signs that your PC is, is infected by a spyware. What about Keylogger? Keylogger uh, sof is a software that have the ability to record every keystroke you make on your PC. So if you have a Keylogger on your PC, or everything you type in, for example, your passwords, will be stolen by the owner of this keylogger. The last thing I'm gonna discuss is ransomware, which is the new trend nowadays. Ransomware is derived from the word ransom, ransom, which is a malware that takes your PC hostage. So if you have a, I hope you will not have a ransomware on your PC because it's like your PC is a hostage now. It will lock it or even worse, it will encrypt it and it will give you a limited amount of time, a limited amount of time. So to pay the ransom so you can free your PC and meaning that you are freeing your data on the PC. By the way, encryption, if you don't know what it is, it's transforming plain text, which is readable data, into cipher text, which is unreadable data. So if you have encryption on the PC, you cannot read the data unless you have the key, the, the key to open the data. In the next chapter, we will be covering how any of these malware and many others can be delivered to your PC. By understanding these delivery methods, you will be able to defend against them and protect your PC online. I would, I would like to thank you for viewing.